this new moon is a timeline jump. It's a energy of creativity and rebirth and expansion that has to do with, of course, the sign of Sagittarius, but also the galactic alignments that are associated with this new moon. This new moon is conjunct the galactic point, the great attractor at 14 degrees of Sagittarius and opposite the star cluster hiatus at six to eight degrees of Gemini. And this uh, combination is an expansive creative energy. And there is more to that because the, this new moon is also aligned with the stargate Antares Aldebaran, two fixed stars opposite each other in, in the astrological wheel at 10 degrees of Sagittarius and 10 degrees of Gemini, respectively. This alignment makes it a multidimensional energy at this new moon. Welcome. Welcome to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. This video is a galactic astrology reading of the Sagittarius new moon at 9 degrees 33 minutes on December 1st, 2024. Welcome. What I do in these videos, I put an outer layer of fixed stars, celestial bodies, and galactic points to the traditional Western tropical astrology wheel. And that is to help us expand into a bigger perspective, both on ourselves, but also our universe. Before we move on, I'd like to thank everyone for your beautiful comments that you've left with me over the past couple of days. I really appreciated every single one of them. Thank you so much. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide. There's a link in the description box below. The ruler of this new moon is Jupiter, and Jupiter is now at 17 degrees of Gemini, conjunct Orion Regal at 17 degrees of Gemini, and also opposite the great attractor. So this is a expansive, creative, visionary energy that is uh, ruling this new moon. Orion Regal is associated with energy such as invention and thinking big and also the abundance that is associated with doing so. So this new moon is a very interesting energy with multidimensional character and texture to it. I should also mention that this new moon is the first new moon since Pluto went into Aquarius now for the next 20 years. And this is also a, a new up-leveling of energy associated with what's to come, new earth, and higher frequencies of energies that we are now going to be experiencing for the next 20 years and beyond. So this new moon is speaking of this deep sense of creativity that we are now asked to tap into. And it's a creativity that has a mystery to it, the magic and awe of what happens in a creative moment. This is the time where we are invited to create beyond the physical. And what I mean with that is we are now asked to expand our perspectives of what we truly feel is real, what we truly feel is possible not only for ourselves, but in terms of existence and experiences overall. And this new moon may be a taste of something that you have been imagining before, and not in the physical world yet, but you will be reminded that your ultimate power lies in when you create beyond the seen, in the unseen. And this is also an energy that is very Aquarian. Aquarius is also not only the air sign, but it's also a uh, very highly technology-wise advanced energy signature. And here, this is a new way of creating. And this powerful creative moment that this new moon may be presenting to yourself is one that you are not expecting. 
And often in our creative endeavors is that when things are just happening without any expectation, but it comes out so pristine, this is exactly that archetypal energy that we're working with at this new moon. And fueled by that is often a sense of purpose, a sense of mission that actually directs this uh, creative force into something so unique. And this is really what this new moon is about, to allow ourselves to expand into a new perspective, uh, much, much bigger than what we have been working with before, and it's due now. We're invited to stop analyzing and tap into the flow of creation itself. We are asked now at this new moon to step into the magic, the awe, the unseen is so much more than what we can prove, what we can analyze, and what we can see. So it's this expanded perspective that is in front of us now and in the forefront of the Aquarian age and moving forward. This new moon is also speaking of that our Earth is a creation of such energies. And Earth is a uh, energy of magic, of awe, and everything in between. We're asked to expand with our inner fire rather than trying to manipulate it or direct it into a form that we think is right. Now we are invited to follow that creative life force within, and that fire becomes our unique expression. This new moon is also highlighting a point of release of ancestral karma that has held our uh, creative forces down. And we're going to talk more about that in theme one coming up. The opportunity for us to make a timeline jump here at this time in beginning of December 2024 is huge. At this time, we are realizing also that our uh, inner work uh, is what creates this momentum. Some of us are realizing as well that our inner work, the diligence that we've placed in going within and allowing uh, resistance to fade away, allowing uh, frustration to subside, uh, resistance is often what holds us down, our creative juices, so to say. At this new moon, we also have a momentum going, uh, and it's created due to our inner work done so far. Before we go into the new moon chart, I'd like to highlight the three energetic themes that you'll be receiving here in this video. And the first energetic theme is expanded perspective is due. And here we're going to talk about Lipas Nihao, uh, the fixed star Orion Regal, and also asteroid Nessus and dwarf planet Orcus. The second theme is the road is clear. And here we're going to talk about dwarf planets Salacia and Varuna's influence on this new moon, along with the supergalactic center. The third theme is inner work creates personal momentum. And here we're going to talk about the fixed art Tau Ceti and also Perseus Algol. And I also have a little bonus around the Pluto ingress to Aquarius now for 20 years. And I've taken a look at the higher energies of Pluto and see what we can find out there. All right, let's take a look at the new moon chart next. So here we have the new moon chart where you can see the sun and the moon are together there at 9 degrees 33 minutes of Sagittarius, conjunct the fixed star Antares at 10 degrees of Sagittarius, but also the galactic points, the great attractor at 14 degrees of Sagittarius. And here I've also highlighted the ruler of this new moon, Jupiter, up there in Gemini, conjunct Orion Regal at 17 degrees of Gemini as well. So that's 
Jupiter is still in retrograde, which can be interpreted as this expansion, this uh, creative timeline jump is sensed from within. The retrograde energy here is about internal expansion. And Orion Rigel here is helping us to see the inner riches that we have and explore those further. And uh, this ruling energy is definitely um, part of the connection with the Stargate, Antares, Aldebaran. You can see Aldebaran there is that 10 degrees of Gemini uh, opposite Antares at 10 degrees of Sagittarius. So this is a multidimensional energy that we are invited to connect with at this time. And I wanted to highlight the great attractor here today because of its conjunction to the new moon, but also its significance when it comes to helping us integrate parts of ourselves at this time with Jupiter in retrograde. It's uh, very much connecting with parts of ourselves that we are and that we may not have had access to before. The great attractor at 14 degrees of Sagittarius is a super cluster, a black hole, if we call it that. Uh, I call it usually a universal driver of wisdom. And uh, the great attractor, particularly, you can see here on this image, it looks like a sinkhole in the universe, in the energies. The galactic points I often see as magnets for wisdom, for energy, and the great attractor is no different. You can see on the image there, poles that gravitates energy to it. And uh, Milky Way is right over my head here <laughs> where we are, and you can see just the energetic image that this uh, image represents of the great attractor over there, um, over here. <laughs> so this new moon is a very powerful moon uh, ruled by Jupiter that it invites us to go within and stay within and uh, experience new parts of ourselves that we have yet to connect with. Some of us are feeling that we have new talents and gifts that are coming online at this time, perhaps part of a uh, shift in uh, our focus. Perhaps it has to do with go shifting from all the inner healing that many of us have uh, been in the process of doing over the past couple of years and now moving into more of our mission, the sharing of all that wisdom and connecting with new talents and gifts that we are meant to share with others in the next 20 years or more. So yes, this expanded perspective, this expanded experience is due now. And that takes us into the first energetic theme that we want to talk about today, which is expanded perspective is due. So let's dive into the first theme. So here we have the first theme, expanded perspective is due. And here we have the new moon, Again, and here I want to highlight that connection with the Stargate, Aldebaran, Antares here, and uh, particularly the opposition there, Aldebaran at 10 degrees of Gemini and the hiatus star cluster at 6 to 8 degrees of Gemini. This connection that the new moon is making with both the Stargate and the hiatus star cluster is an energy signature of creativity and refueling, renewing that force of creativity within us with a multidimensional uh, character. This is a significant connection that the new moon uh, is highlighting for us that is uh, open to us at this new moon to connect with. So for yourself, what does this mean to you to connect with a multidimensional creative force? Uh, this is a new start for many. And this new beginning has a, a very expansive creative texture to it. 
And before we dive further into this theme, I'd like to highlight Aldebaran here and the hiatus star cluster on the sky map so that you can orient yourself where you are in the sky as well. And it's often in relation to the Orion star constellation here that we can identify hiatus and Aldebaran in the sky. We also have the Pleiades star cluster that helps us also orient where this important hub is. Often in uh, uh, clients' soul journeys, I see a connection to hiatus star cluster when often uh, right before uh, the soul has decided to descend in incarnation to earth. And that is, uh, I've seen it over and over again as a creative infusion of life force that is uh, the soul has been receiving uh, through that soul incarnation. So that's very interesting to see. And for this new moon to highlight this need for an infusion of life force at the soul level is a beautiful one to see. We all are invited to connect with that powerful energy at this time. Mercury is now in retrograde since November 25th until December 15th, right ahead here of the sun and moon in Sagittarius at 20 degrees of Sagittarius, opposite the ruling Jupiter here at 17 degrees of Gemini. Mercury is opposite the fixed star Nihal at 20 degrees of Gemini. And we're coming back to speaking about Nihal in a second. Also, we have dwarf planet Orcus here at 17 degrees of Virgo, opposite the asteroid Nessus at 16 degrees of Pisces, pretty close to Saturn there at 12 degrees of Pisces, conjunct Eridanus Archinar. And this is where I see this expansion is due, because Orcus is our karmic consciousness, opposite Nessus, which is also sometimes representing ancestral karma. And Saturn next to Nessus there, there's a strong energy of addressing that ancestral karma. And in opposition, it's a balancing point. So here we are releasing a, and balancing out ancestral karma that has to do with our karmic soul contract that is due at this time so that we can make space for this expansion that many of us are due for now. Here I'm just highlighting Orcus amongst other dwarf planets here on this little map of dwarf planets that uh, is highlighting the size of them. Orcus is one of the brothers uh, of Pluto, which is highlighting uh, our increased awareness of karmic consciousness uh, at this time. And on the other side here above my head is a orbit map where I've highlighted Orcus and Nessus. Nessus in orange there, it's faint, so I don't know if you can see it, but the orbit of Nessus is off-centered of the sun, while Orcus' orbit is um, very much more round, I would say, around the sun. So the karma balance is often what we work with during an incarnation to come back to balance from previous incarnations on some aspect of our soul journey. And Orcus is more of a stable presence, uh, allowing us to be reminded and heightened awareness around karmic consciousness is due now. Over the course of our soul's journey, we uh, are working with forces of karmic balance. And often our incarnations in physical form are used to balance karma. And uh, Nessus is a representation of the ancestral parts of our karma that uh, in some incarnations we might have taken on a higher proportion of ancestral karma than in other incarnations. And so throughout our soul's journey, we work with allowing that balance to happen between one incarnation to another. And I also want to say that Nessus' energy in many times is 
the first thing that we need to face when it comes to spiritual expansion, and that is our um, karma load in that incarnation, which is often associated with ancestral uh, aspects that we have taken on as part of our soul contract. And that uh, brings us to this uh, grand cross between Mercury retrograde, Jupiter conjunct uh, Orion Regal and Mercury opposite Le Lepus Nihal and dwarf planet Orcus opposite asteroid Nessus in proximity with Saturn here and the fixed star Archenar that has to do with spiritual expansion. Now, Nessus is asking us to, in order for expanding spiritually, we need to let some karma go. Uh, karma is energy, and how we balance energy is through our, what we do, what we intend, how we process energy within, and how we share energy with others. Orcus is here to remind us that it's time now <laughs> to do, to, it's due, basically. Jupiter is here to help us with that internal expansion and Mercury retrograde as well with the internal messaging and the vision for the next phase to come. And here we have uh, Lepus Nihal, which is also called a hare, uh, south of, on the sky map here of Orion. Regal. This is an energy signature that has to do with the blue ray energy. Nihal is associated with six dimensional blue ray indigo energy that has to do with no separation between the emotional body and the physical. Sometimes we are talking about empath energy here when we talk about Nihal. Orion Regal is associated with inner riches and realizing that we have everything we need within, the answers are within. And so this combination and this highlight also coupled with the Stargate association at this new moon is a significant creative life force uh, energy and also the link here to the hiatus star cluster that is this ultimate infusion of life force, of creativity. This is a strong signature, a galactic signature for seeding new visions. And there may also be new souls coming to Earth at this time with that new vision of the Aquarian Age. Yeah, wow. This is evolutionary energy that we have available to work with at this new moon in Sagittarius. So some of the things that you may have noticed around this time, beginning of December, that you are getting curious about or want to di dive deeper with. So some of the insights that you may have at this time uh, at the Sagittarius new moon may be highly innovative, or at least consider innovative uh, of this time. But deep down, these are gifts and seeds that you are bringing here now that are meant to uh, be expanded upon, coming out of its shell, so to say, at this time. So I'm excited for, leave comments under this video, what you're experiencing when it comes to these insights. And often they come from the unseen, right? So it is about Jupiter's and Mercury's guidance here to go within for that inner perspective, that inner experience of the awe, the magic within alchemy of existence that we are presented with here on Earth. And you may also be very done with certain patterns or behaviors or people or jobs at this time. And it's so clear that this is over. Now, there's a purpose. We all have to leave space and create space for the new to come in. And this new moon is very much such. All right, let's take a look at the second theme. The road is clear. So here we have the second theme that I've called, the road is clear. 
And here we are focusing on the new moon again at nine degrees of Sagittarius. But we also have a beautiful connection with Varuna at nine degrees of Leo and with Mars very close to in proximity there. It's a powerful call to action. And also we have a connection with Salacia, dwarf planet Salacia at nine degrees of Aries there. This builds a beautiful grand trine that has an energy of higher love. And coming from within, this energy is really what's fueling this new moon uh, from a higher perspective, from a soul perspective. And I'll walk you through what I see here. So Varuna in Leo is the epitome of self-mastery of the heart and how we live through the heart. Varuna is guiding us how to become sovereign as individuals here on earth at this time. Varuna is the higher octave, higher expression, higher vibration of Saturn. And as we know, Saturn has been connecting with fixed star Eridanus Archenar for quite a while there at 15 degrees of Pisces which is archetypally uh, associated with spiritual expansion. So that lesson, that invitation, that call for action that uh, Saturn is making with that connection to Archenar is fueled by Varuna's presence in Leo here. And that's the higher goal to move towards spiritual mastery when it comes to our own sovereignty, living from the heart, authentic and uh, sovereign. Now, Salacia is the higher octave of Venus and Mars in union. And so that's a very high vibrating, higher love type of energy, a unified masculine feminine energy. And with the new moon in Sagittarius connecting here very closely in orb at nine degrees here with a, a grand fire trine here, this is the fuel that is that creativity that we are uh, invited to expand into at this time. And Salacia is also in close proximity with the North Node here. Fairly close, at least. The North Node is at four degrees of Aries here. And this combination of energy is uh, guiding us. It's a directional energy. Anytime uh, we can see a close proximity to the North Node, it, it, we know it's move in that direction. So Salacia is uh, very much here to fuel and feed us this higher love energy. And also the other connection that we have with Varuna there is Mars up in Leo there. Mars is the call to action. The presence of Mars at this time here and Varuna is showing us where we need to become masters uh, at this time. And we can also notice, I highlighted a supergalactic center there, uh, because both the south node conjunct supergalactic center at two degrees of Libra, opposite the north node, of course. The supergalactic uh, energy is very much relationship focused. So there is a call here for multidimensional re relationships. What I can read from this directional energy, coupled with this vi very high vibrating guidance from Varuna and Salacia at this time, connecting so beautifully at nine degrees with the new moon, is that some of us may be ready for a higher experience of existence. And what I mean with that is that I'm seeing very much opportunities for astral travel at this time, for example, or telepathy or talents and gifts like that comes online now that is supporting us to become more expanded when it comes to our experience. So here is just a quick check-in with Varuna and Salacia. Here I have highlighted Varuna there on the little map with the Kuiper Belt dwarf planets, but also images of Salacia and Varuna for you to tune into.
So this theme that I called The Road is Clear and this beautiful grand fire trine with such high vibrating energy connecting with the supergalactic center, the nodes, Varuna, Salasia, and the new moon is really helping us to realize that the road is clear now to step into the next phase of what we want to experience. And that is likely for the next 20 years, not something that we can refer to as having experienced before. That is going to likely be something completely new that we, after these 20 years with Pluto and Aquarius, will call our new normal. And this is so exciting because this is super high vibrating energy that is supporting us to make that leap, make that timeline jump that we're due to do at this time. So the road is clear. Okay, are you ready for the third theme that I called inner work creates personal momentum? So here we have the third theme that I've called inner work creates personal momentum. And what we see here is this beautiful trine between Venus at 23 degrees of Capricorn conjunct the fixed star Sulafat in the Lyra constellation at 22 degrees of Capricorn in trine with Uranus in retrograde still at 24 degrees of Taurus and still conjunct Perseus Algol there. This is the last moon that Uranus is considered conjunct Perseus Algol for now. And Algol, which is the representation of the third eye of Medusa, which is the activation of our psychic abilities in many ways, and trining Lyra Selafat there and Venus in conjunction. Lyra Selafat is associated with light language and very high vibrating musical energy. So this is a supportive trine at this time to keep ourselves at a very high frequency. How we can do that is often to tune into high frequency energy music. So that can be also a supportive energy for us at this time. As we go through the expansion of creating space by letting go of the residual ancestral karma that many of us have worked with so hard to transmute. And then we have Mercury that's filling a role in this theme as well in trying to Chiron. And Chiron is now conjunct the fixed star Tau Ceti in the Cetus constellation. This is also an important supportive trine. And Mercury, as I mentioned in the previous theme, is opposite the fixed star Nihal. So Tau Ceti is associated with diligence, with resilience. And in conjunction with Chiron here is often where we have to learn how to stay with an issue to be able to transmute it. And this is a new connection for Chiron at this time to coming back to connecting with Tau Ceti. And often when we are seeing a energy signature of resilience, it means that we're invited to just stay put and allowing a process to happen. And that is exactly what this new moon is all about. This timeline jump that we are invited to make is based on the foundation that we have put in place through diligence, through inner work, through allowing ourselves to sit with what needs to go. And these supportive trines are so powerful here and lots of retrograde energy, right? So it, it is our inner work that creates that personal momentum that we now are ready to take external. And ultimately, it's our presence that this comes through is fueled by this high frequency energy. But also, there is a signature of all that hard work, that hard inner work that many of us have done over many years. And it, that is also something that is present in our aura. So 
it is a acknowledgement of all the inner diligence that has been taking place. And Tau Seti connecting with Chiron again here is that acknowledgement. So here we have Cetus, the whale, and Tau Seti highlighted here. And I also included Crystal Alexis' beautiful image here above of what it uh, epitome of inner work is. Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> So th uh, this is a, a beautiful acknowledgement of that diligence that many of us have put in to realize this timeline jump and expansion at this time. And Sulafat here also is highlighted in the Lyra constellation as a associated with higher frequency through music, to, through frequency, light language. And this is an important connection that Venus is making at this new moon to highlight the importance of associate ourselves and surround ourselves both within and without of high frequency music and light language. Yes, this is a beautiful acknowledgement of inner work, the diligence that has been done so far to create space for this expansion that we are invited to uh, engage in and flow with at this time at the Sagittarius new moon. Ultimately, it's our presence and our intuition that helps guide us now forward into an era where we are invited to work with the unseen, with magic, with the awe of it all on earth and elsewhere. And it's through our inner energy, our presence, and the intention we're setting that creates that momentum next. Before we wrap up this video, I'd like to mention a little bit about Pluto in Aquarius and how Pluto's energy and higher octave of Pluto is influencing us. So Pluto has been moving into Aquarius now uh, on November 19th. And we're experiencing the first couple of minutes here of the zero degree Aquarius with Pluto again, since it's a re-entry, but now for the next 20 years. And Pluto is still conjunct Lyra Aladfar, as we've talked about in many videos before. But what I wanted to find out and check in on is Pluto's higher octave, higher vibration of Pluto is Eris. And Aries, where is she? She's at 24 degrees of Aries now. Also, Pluto's brothers, Orcus and Ixion, I've highlighted here because Orcus and Ixion are also very closely related to the archetypal energy of Pluto as brothers. We know that uh, Orcus has an, a significant role at this new moon and Ixion we're finding at four degrees of Capricorn here. Because sometimes by looking at the higher vibration of a planet, let's say Pluto's uh, higher vibration is Eris, we can also find out what's really going on. So I'll walk you through what I see here. Before we go into the next chart I have, I wanted to show you just Eris there highlighted in pink. And Pluto's brothers there, Orcus and Ixion, on this map. I also put a little star where, for Pluto there. Pluto was once uh, considered a dwarf planet as well, as you may know. And in Aquarius, it's likely how we work together, how we communicate together, how we are sharing with each, each other that is going to be completely different over the next 20 years and more. And how we are going to evolve here is through our own creative forces, connecting more with our own creative forces and aligning with like-minded people to create a new innovation that we have never experienced before. And it's also in the intersection between what's seen and unseen. This would also invite us to co-create in different ways with our guides, with uh, physical people, of course, and combinations of those. 
So this is super exciting. Uh, I don't have the answers for it, but I look at the um, energetic archetypal energies that are available to us, and that is super exciting to follow. I also want to highlight Eris here. Eris is often spoken of as someone who brings discord. And uh, if we look at the orbit of Eris, she's way out there as far as being elliptical and different and unique and fierce. Uh, and uh, yeah, so likely a uh, permanent transformation when it comes to the self to really step out into the unique creative expression that we all have that we may not have tapped into yet, that there's more to come with uh, expansion, uh, such as at this new moon and beyond. Eris is an energy that is fierce, but also is requiring a unique expression to last. And that is the uniqueness part of it that we are stepping into and out into uh, at this time. I also looked at where Eris is going to be in 20 years, let's say when Pluto changes a sign next time, and Eris will be approaching the 29th degree of Aries at this time. So all these 20 years that Pluto is going to be in Aquarius, Eris will remain in Aries still. But after that, she's going to enter the 29 degrees of Aries and likely additional transformational energies, of course, are going to kick in at 2044 and beyond. So here we have the previous chart with the trine between Uranus, per Perseus, Algol, and Venus. And I've added the square that is formed between Eris and Venus at this new moon. So this is the call for expansion, the growth opportunity that Eris is guiding us as a higher energy of Pluto at this time to step into. So here we have the previous chart with Orcus opposite Nessus and Saturn, and also the nodes there. And if we look at the nodes, Ixion is making a T-square at four degrees of Capricorn with the nodes at this time. Ixion is the archetypal energy of that seeker consciousness that is transformational permanently, of course. So that seeker consciousness in T-square with the nodes is really also helping us to guide where we're going next, releasing uh, through the south node and moving forward through the north node. And Ixion is helping uh, here to guide this process forward with a signature of seeker consciousness. So this look at the higher octave of Pluto through the lens of the dwarf planets, the higher expression of Eris that is in square with uh, Venus conjunct Lyra Salafat is that growth opportunity to step into experiencing frequency such as light language here at this new moon and forward, of course, over the next 20 years. Who knows? For example, light language might be quite mainstream to communicate with as a language. Who knows? And also we have Ixion, the seeker consciousness in square, in T-square with the nodes here and showing us the uh, permanent transformation that comes with a seeker path, a higher Ixion is that energy of authenticity and that we often seek, right, in our spiritual journey, but also allowing ourselves to play and follow the bliss and passion of what we are creating and are led to create through this inner passion and fire that we are, that we're getting in contact with as we step beyond rules of the system and following our own inner guidance through our intuition, setting intentions with that presence of ours that has everything we need. Following that inner passion is what Ixion is helping to guide here and supporting Pluto with over the next 20 years, 
to help us step into more of our authentic self, uh, sharing from our hearts, being in our presence and uh, following and setting intentions through that presence that we have. In my 2025 galactic uh, astrology forecast that is available now, I speak of the future energy signature where I take a look at all of these higher octaves uh, energies and where energy is guiding us through the lens of the dwarf planets. So if you're interested in taking a look with me uh, at this evolutionary energy, the future energy signature, take a look at uh, that program. There's a link in the description box below. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide. There's a link in the description box below. I have a couple of questions. Should you want to integrate this Sagittarius new moon energy some more? The first question is, what is an expanded perspective? What does that mean for you? Each one of you are having a expansion in some area of your life. What is that for you? The second question is, in what area of your life could you use some increased self-mastery? And this is a curious question, not to come down on something that's not working. It's more from a desire and curiosity perspective. In what area of your life could you use some increased self-mastery? And if you identify just one thing, that can make a world of difference. The third question is, in what areas of your life can you give yourself an acknowledgement? Because this new moon is also a big warm hug as far as what you have accomplished, what you have moved through, what you have allowed yourself to feel and experience, there is also a point here, particularly at this new moon, where there's space for a big warm hug for yourself. So give yourself a big hug and allow yourself to enjoy and feel the uh, acknowledgement and love that comes through that self-acknowledgement. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all your beautiful comments that I receive. I really love it, every single one of them. And uh, thank you for being here all the way through this video with me. For those who have purchased and will purchase the 2025 Galactic Astrology Forecast, where I will uh, host a Q&A in January. The date for it will come out now in December. This Q&A, I will answer your questions of the material of 2025 and prim primarily of the first quarter galactic astrology that we have ahead of us. So I can't wait to see you there. And we have only two moons left of 2024. That was the galactic astrology reading of the Sagittarius new moon at 9 degrees 33 minutes on December 1st, 2024. And I will be soon back with the next one, the, the full moon in Gemini on December 15th. And until then, take care. Bye-bye.